For this project, any category for a yarn will work, but I used a skein of Karen 1 pound in lace. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. We're using 5 stitches for this project, and they will be as follows. Chain Slip stitch Single crochet half double crochet and double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video so let's get started. To get this dress started we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn, make a slip knot, grab our 5 millimeter hook and we're first going to start off by making a chain that comes out to an inch and this is going to go from under boob to mid boob. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain, chain up an extra three, this counts as a double crochet, prepare for a double crochet, insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off, or that fourth loop from the hook, and then we're going to go down our chain that we just made with one double crochet into every loop. We've just finished putting one double crochet into every loop that we had, what we're going to do next is chain up three, this counts as a double crochet, flip our work, prepare for a double crochet, insert our hook into that first loop with a double crochet, and then go back down our work putting one double crochet into every loop. And then I'm going to keep going until I have just the tiniest chunk of double crochet. If you guys have a bigger chest, go ahead and make this bigger, but I'll meet you guys back once when I have the measurement that I need, and then I'll tell you guys the measurement that I have in the next clip. I now have my super itty bitty chunk of double crochet rows and from one end to the next I just have an inch and a half and this is all that I need obviously if you guys have a bigger chest you guys can keep going but once when I get here what I'm gonna do we're gonna start curving our work so we're gonna chain up three flip our work we're gonna go in with one double crochet into every loop that we have and then once we get to that corner loop we're going to do an increase of three so now that we're here into this corner loop we're gonna be putting three double crochet so there's one two two <laughs> and then three all into that corner loop there we go and then as you guys can see there's our three and then now we're going to start turning our work just a little bit so that we can work into these side double crochets that we have so all we're going to do is prepare for a double crochet go into the side double crochet and put two double crochet into each side double crochet. So there's one, there's two. And then when I have one more to do. So there's one double crochet. And then there's two. And this is what we should have so far. This is what our curve is going to look like. And then once we have this, we're going to start doing some increases on one end and then decreases on the next. The side that we're going to be doing increases on is the side that's going to go up towards our neck. And it's also going to be a long uh, what are we calling this? The length of that little double crochet chunk that we did. So once we get here, we're going to chain up three, flip our work, and then we're going to prepare for a double crochet, insert our hook into this first loop that we have, and that counts as our increase. And then from here, we're going to put one double crochet into every double crochet loop until we reach that increase of three that we did into that corner, because we're going to be doing another increase of three. So as you guys can see, this is our increase of three in the last in the last row. And then I went ahead and put one double crochet into this first loop that we had in this increase of three. And then once we get to that middle loop, we're going to be putting another increase of three just so we can maintain that corner. So there's one, two, and then three. And then from here, we're going to continue putting one double crochet into every loop leaving the last three loops because we're going to do a decrease here and then end off with one double crochet so how we decrease is prepare for a double crochet insert our hook into that first loop yarn over pull through into that next loop yarn over pull through yarn over pull through three yarn over pull through two and then that's how we decrease and then into this last available loop we're just going to be putting one double crochet just to keep the ends clean just like that and then once we have that, I'm going to show you guys how to do the next row and then let you guys have at it. So we're going to chain up another three, flip our work, prepare for a double crochet into this first loop. We're going to insert yarn over pull through into the next loop, yarn over pull through 
yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're going to always continue to decrease on this side while also maintaining our increase on the opposite side. So let's show you guys how to do the corner one more time. We're going to put one double crochet into every loop that we have until we get to that middle loop in our increase of three that we were just at in our previous row. So there is our first loop. Now we're at the second. We're going to put an increase of three. So there's one, two, three, and this maintains our corner. And then from here, we're going to put one double crochet into every loop that we have. And then once we get to that last loop that we have, we're going to do an increase. So that one's just going to be two double crochet into that last loop. So here we are into this last loop that we have. Just go ahead and put two double crochets. So there's one and then there is two. Now that we have this done, this is going to be the remainder of our pattern for the rest of this just regular cut portion. So I'm going to keep going until the base of mine is six inches and the height will also be roughly six inches. And then we're going to start working along the, I guess the top part so that it can connect to the choker. But I'll meet you guys back once when we have the length that we need. We just finished up with our cup. I have the length that I need. So I have the six inches up here and also for the base. And then now we're going to start working on the top part that goes above the cup that starts tapering in going up towards our neck. So I'm going to take a look and see where my yarn ended. This is going to be up to you. I just like to keep things consistent. So since I went ahead and cut and tied down here, I'm going to insert my hook along this side just so it can keep up with this, I guess, design that it's doing. So I'm going to take my same hook and then I'm going to take a look at where we did our increase of three in this last row. And I'm actually going to insert my hook into the loop that's right next to it. That's going along the height of our work. So this is our increase of three. And then this is the hook that's right next to it or the hook. This is the loop that's right next to it. I'm going to insert the hook into that loop. And then I'm going to pull my yarn through. And then once we get here, this is going to be different for everyone, but I'm going to chain up three. This counts as a double crochet. And then into the first four loops, we're going to be doing two decreases. So let's do this together. We're going to prepare for a double crochet, insert our hook into that first loop, yarn over, pull through, insert our hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, pull through two. And then we're going to do this one more time into the next two loops. So prepare for a double crochet, insert, pull through, next, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, pull through two. And then this part is going to be different for everyone depending on your preference and also how many loops you guys have. So I'm just going to do a couple double crochets, but we're basically just trying to even out this top portion. So it's going to eventually go from where we're at double crochets down to half double crochets down to single crochets. And then we're going to keep going that way until it evens out completely. And then once when I feel like I should start to do some half double crochets, we're just going to go in with some half double crochets. So I'm just going to do a couple of these half doubles and then once when I get to a comfortable spot then I will start doing my single crochets and I will start doing them about here and then once we get to the end we're going to chain up one flip our work and then do the same thing going all the way down leaving the last five loops so that we can do a decrease so we're going to do this together really quickly we're going to chain up one flip our work insert our hook with some single crochets into the first few loops however many you guys decide and then we're going to do some half doubles. So there's a couple half doubles. And then, like I said, we're going to work to our doubles, leaving the last five loops. So we have one, two, three, four, five already. So into this loop that we have right here, I'm just going to do a double. And then from here, we're going to do two decreases into the next two loops or into the next four loops. So we're going to prepare for a double crochet, insert, pull through, insert into the next pull through, yarn over, pull through three pull through two and then into the next two loops we're going to do another decrease so prepare for a double crochet insert pull through insert pull through yarn over pull through three yarn over pull through two and then into this last loop that we left for ourselves we're just going to be putting one double crochet just to keep it clean and then i'm going to keep doing this until it evens out completely and this will taper in which is what we want but i'm going to keep doing this until it evens out completely and then i'll meet you guys back we're going to continue to do this but I'll meet you guys back once when it's even so that I can show you guys what to do next. 
this is what we should have once when we have a couple rows of our kind of evening out and then as you can see mine is about as parallel as it can get and then once we get here we're just going to continue going straight up with rows of double crochet until this reaches the base of your neck and then just to let you guys know just from where we started so right about here and working our way up i measured from here up i have a total of five inches and then i'm going to continue doing rows of double crochet just going straight up no increases no decreases nothing fancy until i have a total of seven inches and then once when i get there i'm going to cut and tie so you guys already know how to do this part but really quickly, all we're going to do is chain up three, flip our work, and then go in, putting one double crochet into every loop. Once we get to the end, chain up another three, flip our work, and then do the same thing until yours reaches the base of your neck. Cut and tie, make a second one, and then I'll meet you guys back. This is what we should have once when we have both of our cups all finished. And then I know that I said we're going to attach it to a choker, but we will do that at the end. The next thing we're going to do is start to work on this middle detail that we're going to have. But first, before we do that, we're going to need to connect the two guys. So all we're going to do is insert our hook into this corner, and then we're going to go in with a row of single crochet all the way down. And then once we get down here, we're going to make a couple chains depending on your bust size, and then we're going to connect it to the next cup and then single crochet back down. But I'll meet you guys back once when I get to this portion of our cup so I can tell you guys how many chains I did. I just worked my way down, putting one single crochet into each of these side double crochets that we have. And then once we get to the end, I'm actually going to make a singular chain because I have a small chest. But if you guys have a bigger chest, go ahead and accommodate to whatever chest size you guys have. Put more if you guys need because that's going to be where our middle detail starts. So I'm just going to make my chain up of one. I'm going to grab my second cup, insert my hook into that corner loop. I'm going to yarn over pull through and then single crochet all the way down and since it's all side double crochets we're going to be putting two single crochet into each of these guys and then once we make it to the end don't cut and tie because we have another row to do right after this now we've single crocheted all the way down and what we're going to do from here is chain up three flip our work prepare for a double crochet go ahead and put one double crochet into every loop that we have going all the way down but right before we meet this middle gap that we just made for ourselves, we're going to stop two loops right before that. But I'll show you guys that once when we get there. So we are now two loops away from this middle gap that we left for ourselves. And then once we get here, we're going to chain up one and we're going to do a shell into this middle gap. So we're going to prepare for a double crochet and then just into this gap, we're going to go in with three double crochet. There's one there's two and once we have that we're going to do just a simple chain up of one and put three more double crochet into that gap so there's one two and then three and then once we have that we're going to chain out one prepare for a double crochet we're going to skip the first two loops into this cup skip one skip two insert your hook into that third with a double crochet and then go all the way down putting one double crochet into every loop and then once we get to the end we're going to cut and tie and then we're going to start working on the middle detail. We just finished up doing a row of double crochet, we cut and tied, and now we're going to start working on the beautiful detail that goes underneath. So what we're going to do is insert our hook into the second double crochet loop that we have right next to the shell. So we're not going to be counting this chain that we did, so we're going to count one, two, insert your hook. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and then from here we're going to be doing a shell expansion over this shell so we're going to chain up one prepare for a double crochet double crochet once into the first double crochet that we have for the shell so there's one and this is going to be it for the rest so we're going to chain one double crochet into the next available loop chain one double crochet into the next available loop and then now that we're here, we're at this tiny little middle gap that we made for ourselves. We're going to chain two, prepare for a double crochet, go directly into that middle gap. Once we have that, chain two, and then we're going to prepare for a double crochet, go into that next double crochet loop that we have. And then from here, we're gonna go back to doing chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then to end this off we're going to chain one 
and then we're going to count out two loops. So remember, we're not going to count that chain. We're going to count one, two, insert your hook into that loop right there. And then this is our shell expansion over our shell that we just did. And then once we get here, we're going to slip stitch up the next loop. That's how we work our way up to the next row for this row. We're going to flip our work and then we're going to start off by chaining out three. One, two, three. We're going to go into not this first gap that we made for ourselves, but this next gap with a single crochet. And then that's going to be this pattern. So chain out one, two, three, single crochet into the next gap. One, two, three, single crochet into the next gap. One, two, three. And then we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we get to the base. And then we're going to slip stitch into the next available loop into the base. And then after this, we're going to be doing one more row of loops just like this. But I'll show you guys how to start that once when we get there. We just finished up doing our first row of loops. And then once we have that done, we're going to do another row of loops but with a little shell detail into this middle loop. So in order to work our way up to the next row, we're going to slip stitch into the next available loop that we have in the base flip our work, chain out one, two, three, and then into this first loop that we made for ourselves, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, and then now we are at our middle loop that we have right here, and this should align with that gap that we did with our first shell. But once we get here, we're going to automatically prepare for a double crochet, and then into this middle loop that we have, we're going to go in with another shell. So there's one, two, three double crochet. We're going to chain two and then three more double crochet into that same loop. So here is one, two, three. And then that is how we maintain our peak. And then once we get here into this next loop, single crochet, chain one, two, three single crochet and then keep doing this all the way down and then go ahead and connect into the next available loop that we have once we get into the base. We've made our way all the way down with our second row of loops but with our shell in the middle and now we're going to start adding some fancy stuff. So we're going to be slip stitching up the next two loops that we have. Once we get there we're going to flip our work. And then into this first loop that we made of ourselves, we're going to go in with five double crochet. So here's one, two, three, four, five. And then into this next loop, we're going to put one single crochet. And then into the loop right after that, we're going to go in with five double crochet again. Here's one and a half. Here's two, <laughs> three four and then five and then once we get here we're going to do another shell expansion right over this shell that we have right here right after i get this knot situated but once we get here we're going to chain one prepare for a double crochet insert our hook into that first double crochet that we have for our shell chain one prepare for a double crochet go into that next loop chain one double crochet into the next loop and now we're at the gap that's going to stay the same we're going to chain one one double crochet into the gap chain one one double crochet into the next double crochet loop that we have on the other side of the gap and from here it's going to be the exact same thing that we did on this side it's just going to mirror it on the other side and then once we get to the end we're going to slip stitch into the second available loop that we have into the base and then i will show you guys what to do from there we've just made it all the way around with our row of fan to another fan to shell expansion to fans and we have connected into the base with our slip stitch and now we're going to do a bunch of fan expansions and then maintain this expansion over here as well so what we're going to do is slip stitch up the next two loops there's one there's two we're going to chain up one flip our work and then we're going to prepare for a double crochet put one double crochet into every loop that we have into this first fan with a chain one in between so we're going to chain one, double crochet, <laughs> chain one, uh, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and then into this last one, double crochet. And then once we get here, we're going to not do a chain one because we're going to automatically prepare for a double crochet and then go into this next fan that we have with a double crochet. 
And then from here, now we're going to start with our chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then into this last double crochet loop, we're going to chain one, double crochet, and then once when we meet this shell expansion right here, we're not going to do a chain again. So basically, whenever any of our pieces meet, we're not going to do a chain one. But once we get here, we're going to prepare for a double crochet. We're not going to be going into this gap. We're going to go into the gap after that with a double crochet and then maintain the rest. Chain one, double crochet. And then once we get here, we are going to do a super itty bitty shell into this middle peak right here. So once we get here, we're going to chain out one, prepare for a double crochet, and then we're going to go into this middle double crochet loop that we have with a set of two double crochet. So here is one and then here's two once we have that mini shell so we're going to put a chain out of two and then two more double crochet into this same loop if i can there we go and then once we have that we're going to chain one prepare for a double crochet skip this next gap that we're in because we skipped it on this side and then go in with double crochet and then maintain everything that we did on this side just on the other side and then we're going to insert our hook into the second available loop that we have in the base with a slip stitch. We have made our way all the way around with our row of expansions and now we're going to go in with a row of single crochet. So we're going to slip stitch up just one loop. From here we're going to flip our work and then we're going to go into every loop that we have with one single crochet until we get to this set of two double crochet that's right next to each other where our fans met. So we'll stick together until we get there. So just put one single crochet into every loop. Are we there yet? Not yet. And then here. And then once we get here, we're going to do a little bulb. So all that is, is a chain up of one, two, three. And we're going to insert our hook into this next double crochet loop that we have into the next fan expansion. And then once we get here, put one single crochet into every loop and then maintain the single crochet with the bulb everywhere where the two spots meet and then work our way all the way down and then single crochet into this next available loop that we have. We just made our way around with our row of single crochet and now we're going to work in with another row of kind of net but it's going to be a little bit different so we're going to slip stitch up the next two loops and then we're going to chain out one flip our work we're going to prepare for a double crochet and then we're going to count out one two three loops insert our hook into that third with a set of two double crochet so there's one and then here is two once we have that we're going to chain one prepare for a double crochet count out one two three insert your hook into that third with a set of two double crochet and then I will stick with you guys until we get to this chain up of three. So we're going to chain up one, prepare for a double crochet. We're going to one, two, three, insert our hook into that third with two double crochets, just like we've been doing. And then once we get here, we're going to chain one and then just into this little chain up of three that we made for ourselves, we're going to put one half double crochet just like that and then once we get here we're going to chain up one prepare for a double crochet and then we're going to mirror everything that we just did on this side so however many loops that we have skipped on this side we're going to skip the same amount of loops on this side so as you guys can see i just have one and then a set of two double crochet so i'm going to skip this one and then insert into the next loop with two double crochet so there's one there's two chain one prepare one two three insert into that third with two double crochet, chain one, prepare, count out one, two, three, two double crochet. And then this is going to be the same thing that we did right here. So we're going to chain one, prepare for a half double crochet, half double crochet into this little bulb that we made for ourselves. From here, chain one, and then same deal, but I'm going to stick with you guys until we get to this middle point right here. So we're going to skip one loop because we have one loop skipped on this side. And then we're going to go in with two double crochet, chain one, 
Prepare for double crochet. Count one, two, three. Insert your hook into that third with two double crochet. And then we're going to chain up one, do the same thing, one, two, three. And then mine just so happens to be the middle loop. So I'm gonna go in with three double crochet instead of just two, just so I can maintain that little curve that we have. So here's one, two, and then three. And then once we get here, chain one, prepare for a double crochet, skip two loops because we have two loops skipped right here into that third with a set of two double crochet. And then everything else is going to be exactly the same as we did on this side, just working our way down this side. And then once we get to the base, we're gonna count up to the second available loop with a slip stitch. And then I'll show you guys what to do from there. We have just finished up doing our row of thicker net and we are almost done. What we're gonna do for the next row is slip stitch up the next two loops. So there's one, and there's two we're going to flip our work and then we're going to prepare for a half double crochet and then we're going to be putting one half double crochet into every loop that we have and then once when we reach this middle peak that we made for ourselves so this middle double crochet that we did in the previous row we're going to do a little increase but i'll show you guys how to do that once when we get there We've half double crocheted all the way down and we are now at this middle loop that we have and I have one half double crochet in here and what we're going to do is chain out three, prepare for half double crochet and go into that same loop that we are in forming our little increase and then from here continue putting one half double crochet into every loop going all the way down. Once we make it to the base, we are going to count up the next two available loops, slip stitch into that second loop, and I'll meet you guys back. Now that we've made it to this end, what we're going to do from here is just chain up one and cut. And then right before we start working on the skirt portion, we're going to go in with a row of back loop single crochets, but only for the bottom half of what we just did. So how we do that is we're first going to take a look at one of our cups. It doesn't matter which one, but what we're going to do is take a look at our loops that we have for these double crochets that we had right before we cut the cup portion and then did this top portion. So into this last row that we did, we're going to take a look at these side loops that we have right here. And then we're only going to be working into these. You guys will get this once we start working on the bottom portion, but it's going to seem a little funky now, but we're just gonna insert our hook into that back loop. So instead of going in through both of these guys, we're gonna insert into this back loop, grab our yarn, make a slip knot, insert that onto our hook, and then we're gonna pull this through and we're gonna go around with a row of back loop single crochets around the entirety of the bottom of this top portion. So once we have that, we're going to insert into this back loop, single crochet, and then we're going to keep doing this all the way around. We're going to maintain this corner and then we're going to work our way all the way around up until we get to these loops that end on this side of the cup. So basically the same side, just on this cup right here. And once we get there, we're going to cut and tie and then I'll show you guys what to do from there. We just finished up doing our row of back loop single crochets going along the entirety of the bottom that we have. And now we can start working on the skirt portion. So from here, we're just gonna insert our hook into this loop that we have in this corner. We're not gonna be working up here just yet. We're gonna insert our hook into this corner loop. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. And then from here, we're going to start off by making just a regular chain that goes as long as you want it to go. Mine's going to be relatively short, so I'm gonna make a chain of 22 inches but I'm gonna be making 22 inches because this is gonna have a decent amount of shrinkage as well. So go ahead and keep that in mind. So I'm gonna start off by making my chain. Once when I have my chain, I'll show you guys what to do from there. We now have our chain and what we're gonna do from here is block off that last chain that we made, chain up one, and then from here we're going to slip stitch into every chain. So all that is is insert a hook, yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. So let's do this one more time insert yarn over pull through everything and then we're going to keep doing this all the way down once we get to the base we're going to connect into the base with a slip stitch just like how we've been doing with the middle design but i'll show you guys how to do that one more time and then we will go from there 
we made it all the way down our chain and like i said we're going to connect into this base with a slip stitch just like how we've been doing so just as a refresher we're going to take a look at the next available loop and then slip stitch into that guy and then in order to work our way up to the next row we're going to slip stitch going up the next loop we're going to flip our work and this is going to be all back loop slip stitches so once we get here we're going to insert our hook into this back loop with a slip stitch and then we're going to keep doing this all the way down once we make it to the end, we're going to chain up one, flip our work, and then do more back loop slip stitches, working our way back. And then we're going to keep doing this until we get to the end of this little blunt portion that we have. And then once when we get to our design, we're going to start doing some decreases. But I'll show you guys how to do that once when we get there. We have slip stitched our way back, and we left the last two loops like I said we would. So all we're going to do from here is go into that back loop, yarn over, pull through. Go into that next back loop, yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. And then from here, we're just going to connect into the next available loop with a slip stitch. And then one more time really quickly, we're going to slip stitch up the next loop to work our way up to the next row, flip our work, and then we're going to decrease into these first two loops. So insert, pull through, insert, pull through everything on the hook, and then continue going back down with back loop slip stitches. And then we're actually going to continue doing this all the way down until we reach the peak of our middle design that we have and then once we have that we're going to cut and tie and then we're going to do the same thing that we did over here but on the other side and then we're going to connect it in the middle and then i'll meet you guys back once we have both of these sides done this is what we have once we have both of our front panels finished and now we're just going to connect it so all we're going to do is we're going to fold it over but first we're going to take a look at the side that has that ribbing that we did for ourselves where we did the back loop single crochets along the bottom and we're actually going to fold that into itself because that is going to be the outside because that is the pretty side so we're going to start off by making sure that that ribbing touches each other when we fold it over now that we folded it over we're going to connect it now so since our work is currently into one side we're going to insert our hook into the other side and from here we're going to yarn over pull through everything that's on the hook and then from here, we're going to go in through both sides that we have, making sure that they're connected. And we're going to go in with a row of single crochet, but we're going to be going in with the row of outside loops. So it's going to be a front loop into this front panel and a back loop into this back panel. So let me just show you guys. So once we get here, we're going to insert our hook into the first available loop that we have. And we're only going to be going into the front loop since this is the panel that's closest to us. And then taking a look at the panel that's furthest away from us, we're going to go into the next available loop. And then we're going to be going into that back loop. So instead of going in through both, we're going to be going in through the back loop like so. And then single crochet like normal. And then we're doing this so that once when we flip it back inside out, we can have a ribbing that matches the ribbing that we just did for the majority of the dress. But go ahead and keep doing this all the way until you reach the top or the bottom, whichever way you started. And then once you get to the end, go ahead and cut and tie so we can start working on the back. We have connected the entire front piece together and now we can start working on the back. And just to let you guys know, if this is looking a little small, do not worry because this does stretch quite a bit. But I'm also mentioning that because we're going to start working on the back and the back actually doesn't need to be that big because it can stretch. Now that our dress is folded into each other, now we can start working on the back panel. So once we get here, we're going to take a look at that row of back loop single crochets that we did around the little bit of the side and then also along the bottom. And then we're going to use that in order to start off our back panel. <laughs> so we're going to take a look at this. This is very clearly going to be obvious which one we're first going to go into. But we're going to insert our hook into that back loop we're going to insert our yarn onto that hook we're going to pull through and chain up one to secure and then once we get here we're going to continue doing our row of back loop slip stitches so that it matches the front portion of the dress and then we're going to keep going until if you guys want until we reach our stitch marker and the stitch marker is in seven inches from the bottom but this is all going to depend on you if you guys want a slit or not but this is going to be where my slit is. So we're going to do back loop slip stitches all the way until we get to this stitch marker. And then once we reach the stitch marker, we're going to make a regular chain that is not 
touching this side so that we can maintain this slit. But I'll show you guys how to do that once when we get there. We've just finished up doing our first row of back loop slip stitches all the way until we got to our stitch marker. And then what we're going to do here is just make a regular chain that equals out to the same length that we have right here. And then once we have that, we're going to block off that last chain, chain up one, and then work our way back with back loop single black back loop slip <laughs> stitches. <laughs> I cannot speak all the way down. And then we're going to continue that throughout the body of the work. And then we're going to bring it all the way back down here chain up one and then keep going back and forth like that but i'll meet you guys back once when i have my actual length that i have for this back panel that we're doing because it might be a little bit tricky because you're going to want to make it bigger but it doesn't need to be that big because it does stretch quite a bit so i'll meet you guys back once we have all that done and then we'll go from there we now have the tiniest little side slash back panel that we just did that was all blunt that went across and the length that I have from this last row that we have right here over to the first row is only an inch, but keep in mind that this does stretch quite a bit. And now we're gonna start working on the V back that we're gonna have so that we can have our corset back ties. And all that is is just going to be decreases on this side, and then we're going to back loop slip stitch all the way down, keep the other side blunt, work our way back, and then decrease again. So really quickly, just to show you guys how to decrease one more time, we're going to chain up one, flip our work, and then we're going to insert our hook into the first available back loop, yarn over, pull through, into the next available back loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and then that is our decrease. And then from here, continue doing back loop decreases once into every back loop. Once we make it to the end, chain up three, chain up three, chain up one, work our way back, leaving the last two loops that we have here, and then we're going to decrease into the last two loops, and then do this all over again until we have the length that we need so that this reaches the middle of your back and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Before I start the other side, I am gonna meet you guys back just to tell you guys the length that I have in total. But then, yeah, I'll meet you guys back once we have all that done. I just finished up doing our side slash back panel and as you guys can see, this is where the slit is. And I actually went ahead and did both of mine but just to let you guys know just one side is a little bit over four inches but that is because we have this entire front panel to take into account and this stretches a lot too but once we have all that once we have both of our panels done we are now going to connect them together and this is going to be the same way that we connected the front piece so let's just do it together as a quick refresher we're going to insert our hook into this corner loop we're going to yarn over pull through and then from here, we're going to be working into the outside loops. So we're going to insert our hook into the loop that's closest to us. Insert it into the one that's furthest away from us and single crochet. And then we're going to keep doing this all the way down really quickly. Make sure that your seams are facing the same side so that once we flip it inside out, we don't have that anywhere. But go ahead and keep doing this all the way down once we make it to the bottom of the V or as high as you can go. Go ahead and cut and tie and then we'll finish up the back piece. We just finished up connecting our back pieces together and then the next thing that we have to do right before we start working on the neck and then finish is just going in with a row of single crochet along this back V portion so that we can go in with our corset back ties once when we're done. But when we do that, there's not going to be any real loops for us to go into so you're going to have to Figure it out, don't put too many single crochets in one area, otherwise it'll bunch up. And then we're going to go all the way down here, and then once we meet down at the bottom of this V, we're gonna do a little decrease, but I'll show you guys how to do that once when we get there. But to start this off, we're going to insert our hook into this corner piece that we have, insert our yarn, single crochet all the way down, and then I'll meet you back at the bottom of the V. We've made our way over to the bottom of the V and we're going to do a decrease like I said. So let me just take that out. As you guys can see, this is the seam that we have on the inside of our dress. And then into the first loop that we have that's right next to our seam, we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. And then into the loop that we have on the other side of our seam, insert, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all three. And then that's just how we maintain the point of our V. And then from here, we're going to continue doing the same thing. So single crochet 
all the way up until we get to this other end. Once we get here, we're going to cut and tie, and then we're going to go in with some loops so that we can tie in our strand later <laughs> for our corset back tie. We just single crocheted all the way around and we slip stitched into this last loop that we had and now we're going to do just a little itty bitty row of net just along this inner V portion so that we can tie in our corset tie later. But once we get here we're first just going to follow this little single crochet row until we get to this corner which is this one right here and then we're going to insert our hook, insert our yarn. Once when we've inserted our yarn, we're going to chain up four. Here's one, two, three, four. First three count as a double crochet. We're going to prepare for a double crochet, skip one loop, double crochet into the loop after that, and then let's do this again. We're gonna chain up one, prepare for a double crochet, skip one loop, double crochet into the loop after that. And then we're gonna keep doing this until we have just a handful of loops once we get down to the middle of this V, and then I'll show you guys what to do from there. We have our row of net going all the way down one side of our V and then as you guys can see I have about two loops right before we get to this middle loop or the decrease that we did with our single crochets into the middle and we're actually not going to do anything into any of this because we don't want this part to buckle when we wear it. So all we're going to do is skip all of these loops, we're going to prepare for another double crochet and then we're going to take a look and see where this last double crochet on this side was so like i said we don't have anything into these two loops here's one two and then the middle so we're going to take a look at this other side and then one two insert our hook into this third because that's where this one is on this side with a double crochet and then we're going to continue doing the same thing so double crochet chain one double crochet chain one going all the way back up and once we make it all the way back up we're going to cut and tie but just make sure that we have the same amount of loops on both sides and then i'll meet you guys back we just got done doing our corset back loops in the back and now we are ready to finish this off by doing the choker that is going to tie everything together. So once we have this we are able to try this on, go ahead and put this on and then we are going to measure from this corner over to this corner and that's going to be how long you want the inside part of this choker to be and mine just so happens to be 4 inches and then also you're going to want to measure around from this around your neck over to this side and then in total including this middle part all the way around i have 11 inches so i'm going to start off by making a chain of two inches here and i'm going to single crochet across a chain of four inches here single crochet across and then chain of two inches on this side because remember we do need to leave a little gap in the back so that we can tie it all in together so to get this started i'm going to grab my yarn insert my hook and I'm going to start off by making a chain of two inches. Once when I have my chain I'm going to grab one of our cup strands, I guess is what we're going to call it for the video's sake. We're going to insert our hook into this corner. Once we get here we're going to yarn over if we can, yarn over this way, yarn over, <laughs> pull through everything and then we're going to go in with single crochet going all the way across. And then once we have this, we're going to make a chain that comes out to whatever measurement you guys have in between these two strands. Like I said, mine is four inches. So I'm going to make that chain, measure it out, and then I'll show you guys how to do this side once when we get here. Now that I have my middle chain, I'm going to grab this other strand, insert my hook into this corner, I'm going to yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. And then we're going to single crochet across this guy and then we're going to do whatever amount you guys have on this side so like i said mine is two inches we're going to do the same thing on this side and then we're going to make the chain bulky once we have our chain along the entirety of our top portion we're now going to do the choker and this is going to be ridiculously simple so what we're going to do is block off that last chain we're just going to chain up one and then we're going to go into every loop that we have with a single crochet. And then once we make it to the end, we're going to chain up one and single crochet back. And we're going to keep going like that until you guys have a choker for you guys that is as thick as you guys want. And then I will meet you guys back. Don't cut and tie because we do need to be able to insert our back tie. But 
go ahead and make that and then I'll meet you guys back. I've just finished up doing my choker portion and from one end to the next I have about an inch but yours can obviously be as big or as little as you guys want. But once when we're here we're going to work on a little triangle so that that can attach to our tie that can tie around the back of our neck. So what we're going to do from here is chain up one. We're going to be working into the side portion of our choker that we just made. So what we're going to do is just insert our hook into every loop-ish that we have with a single crochet. And then once we make it to the end, we're going to start decreasing. We're going to chain up one, flip our work, and then we're going to decrease into each end. So into this first loop, yarn over, pull through. Into the next loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And then we're going to single crochet until we have two loops left. And as you guys can see, I only have one single crochet in the middle. So we're going to put one single crochet in there. And then into these last two loops, we're going to decrease again. So insert, pull through, next loop, insert, pull through, pull through all three. We're going to chain up one, flip our work. And then now we just have three of these loops left we obviously can't do a decrease on both sides so we're going to do a decrease of three right into these three loops so we're going to insert pull through insert pull through insert pull through yarn over pull through everything on the hook and then once we have this little tiny triangle we're going to make a regular chain that can wrap around the back of your neck and also tie to the other string that we're going to have so I'm going to go ahead and make a really regular chain of about 15 inches. Once when I have that, I'm going to cut and tie and then do this exact same thing that we just did right here on the other side. We are now all finished doing our choker. And then one of the last things that we have to do other than weaving in the ends is making a chain that can weave in and out of these back loops that we made for ourselves. And I made a regular chain of 50 inches. And then once we have that, go ahead and just weave in all of your ends and then we'll be all done. We have woven in our ends and this is our finished dress. This dress has been a long time coming, but it's finally here and I am extremely excited to share with you guys. This was so much fun to create and I can't wait to see how y'all make this into your own. And if you guys are planning on making this, give this video a big thumbs up. It is right beneath the video. It lets YouTube and I know you're enjoying the videos and it goes a really long way with helping the channel grow and gain traction. But if you didn't like it, give this video a thumbs down, but be sure to leave me a comment letting me know why you didn't like it. Or if you have any questions, requests, or if y'all just want to say hi, I usually reply pretty quick. <laughs> if you love it, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, it's right beneath the video. It'll let you know when there's a new video uploaded to the channel, get you a bit more priority when it comes to requests, and it goes a really long way with helping the channel grow so we can keep making all these great videos for you guys. If you're already subscribed, huge thanks to you guys, but please hit that notification bell to know when there's a new video uploaded for you right away. And please share with your crafty friends on all platforms, so Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you guys have. We don't have a Facebook, but please share away however you guys see fit. Links to the yarn and the hooks will be in the description, and if you guys buy something using those links, that also goes towards helping out the channel. Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest links are down there as well, and as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.